had a rose garden here at the preserve since we opened almost six years ago, and it slowly deteriorated over time. So we decided it was time for a total renovation of it. And we found three rose breeders who were willing to donate plants to us for us to trial in the heat that they had bred specially for hot climates. So we replaced all of the roses with varieties that are thought to be much more heat tolerant and have a much longer blooming season in hot environments. So we're hoping that they will do much better for us than other roses have done in the past. Maybe we can find some that are especially well adapted to our environment and convince local nurseries to carry those. But their flowering time is something that is still a big unknown for us. And we only planted them in January and February as bare root, dead looking plants. Uh, so we weren't quite sure what to expect. Many of them, in fact, almost all of them, have flowered spectacularly this spring. In the past, our roses have performed very well in April and May, and then sort of petered out. We're hoping that we'll get a longer season of bloom with these because they have been specially selected for the heat. Over the years, we've never really been happy with our herb garden. We all realize that part of the problem is herbs are not spectacular plants on their own. You plant a rose garden full of roses, and it's going to be beautiful almost no matter what you do with it, because roses are beautiful. Herbs are not that beautiful. Most of them are just sort of green, almost weedy looking plants. When we were talking about it, we realized that what we loved about herb gardens was structure and design. And our garden didn't have much of that. So this year we went in and added a lot of new design elements that we think have really improved it. We added an herb spiral to give a little elevation to the garden. We added a couple of pattern beds with different colors of bark mulch to delineate them. And we think that that kind of structure, even with the same plants, will give us a much better feel for the herb garden. The uh, pattern gardens and things like knot gardens and mazes have been traditional parts of herb gardens for thousands of years. The herb spiral is a relatively new idea. It conserves water because you can plant drier plants at the top and plants that like more moisture at the bottom and as the water drains through from the top, you only need to water from the top and the plants at the bottom will get wet from all the drainage from the plants above it. So it's sort of a permaculture idea that allows you to plant more plants in a limited space and take advantage of that height for the watering. The herb garden is almost always on our guided tours just because it is looking very good and because people are very interested in planting herbs at this time of year. And if people would like more information about the herb spiral, they can ask any of our gardeners because all of them worked on it and anyone they meet in the gardens would be happy to explain it to them. <laughs>